Recording your voiceover in GarageBand is slightly more complicated than doing it directly into iMovie, although it does have some advantages. Before you start recording though, you'll need a rough cut of the video you want in your documentary already in the timeline. Use your script board as a guide to help you put in the appropriate footage. To record a really good quality voiceover, you'll need to use an external microphone such as a blue snowball or a snowflake. Plug your mic into the USB connector of your computer. Now go and open up GarageBand. From this dialog box, choose New Project, and then from within that, make sure you've chosen Voice. When you see this dialog box, choose a name and a place to save your project. I'm going to call mine VoiceOver for Documentary. Make sure you choose somewhere to save it where you can find it again, and click Create. You'll notice when the window opens you have two tracks. One male basic, one's called female basic. That means that they've got uh, a small amount of echo added to them. So you need first to take that away before you start recording. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to choose no effects. And then I'm going to select the female basic track. And I'm going to go up here and again I'm going to choose no effects. You'll notice now that both tracks are the same. They're both called no effects so they have no effects applied to them. You can now record your script in small, easily manageable chunks. So to record in one of these tracks, make sure you've got one selected, that's the blue one there, and then you just hit the record button. It's really easy. It's really easy to record a voiceover in iMovie. It's really easy to record a voiceover in iMovie. Once you've finished recording, hit the red button. You can also use the spacebar to stop recording. Now what you need to do is edit what you've recorded so that you can get rid of the bits that were wrong. So come down here and click on the track editor, that's this button here, and then you'll see a larger version of the timeline appearing. And within it you can see the waveforms of all the different attempts I made to uh, record what I wanted. So here I can actually then just uh, find the part that I want to keep, and that's this part here, the third attempt. And if I move my playhead to that position, and then click Command T, what it does is it splits the track. Now the bit that's remaining, the, the bit that's in the darker shade of purple is uh, the bit that's currently activated. So if I now hit the delete key, it get, gets rid of everything that was before the part that I recorded. I can go back down here, I can move my playhead along to the end because I don't want any silence at the end. And again I can do command T and then I've got to be careful because I need to select the bit that I don't want before I delete it by hitting the delete key. All I need to do now is just pick this up and I'll do this. I'm going to close my track editor and I'm going to move the bit that I've got left right down so that it's right at the beginning of the track. You're now done with this clip so let's move on and record the next one. Now what you need to do here is click the little button here with a speaker with a cross through it. So that's a mute, that's the mute button. That means that when I record the next track, the track that I've just recorded won't be heard. So now I'm going to move on to the track 2. And again, I'll move my playhead back to the beginning. And I can press the record button and start recording again. I've now filled both tracks with uh, clips that I want to keep and, and export later. Uh, but I need now to record a few more tracks for my voiceover. So what I can do now is go up here to the track menu and I can choose duplicate track. You'll also see that I can use command D to duplicate. So for that I'm going to choose and now I have an additional track which I can then go ahead and record my next piece of voiceover. So that's how you build up the voiceovers and now I'm going to do some more recording and I'll come back when I've got a few more tracks. You can see now that I've recorded six pieces of voiceover. Uh, you can see now also that each one is on a separate track. The reason that I've recorded them on separate tracks is because now I can export them separately as pieces of voiceover. You'll also notice that each track that I've recorded previously I've also muted by using the mute button. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export them one by one. So I'm going to hit the mute button for the final track that I just recorded and I'm going to go up and select my first track and deselect the mute button so now we're going to be able to hear it. 
So now I go up to the share menu and I choose send song to iTunes. Okay, so the important thing here is that you create a new playlist. I'm going to call my playlist documentary voiceover tracks. MP3 is fine as a format and the only thing now to do is click share. It's really easy to record a voiceover in iMovie. What iMovie also does of course is it plays it so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the name by clicking twice on the track and I'm just going to call it one. So now let's go back to GarageBand and now I'm going to mute track one and I'm going to unmute track two. So now track two is the only one that's audible. I'm going to do the same thing again, send song to iTunes, same playlist, same encoding, share. There's just one or two things you have to watch out for. And a second track appears and again I change the name. Now I'm going to do that for each one of my tracks. So I've exported each of my tracks from GarageBand into iTunes and I've changed the name each time uh, to a different number. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've also made sure that they're all in the same playlist, documentary voiceover tracks. That's going to make it really easy for me when I come to bringing them into my documentary in iMovie. If I now go back to iMovie, I can now open up the music and sound effect browser and I can choose from iTunes all of my playlists. So it's easy now for me to go to documentary voiceover tracks, the playlist I just made. And you can see here now I have my tracks one, two, three, four, five, and six. It's really easy then for me to drag voiceover track one to the right point on my timeline as a separate audio track. It's really easy to record a voiceover in iMovie. And that's it. That's how you uh, record your voiceover in GarageBand to export it to iTunes and then use iTunes to bring your tracks individually into iMovie. It takes longer and it's a little more involved, uh, but it is better because if you do lose your project in iMovie, then your voiceover tracks are still safe somewhere.